We can see the screen. All right, feel free to start. Hi everybody, we are the Brain Machines featuring the Brain Engineers. Our topic is neuroengineering and today we are going to be focusing on the influence of neuroengineering on music and society. So to start us off, um, we have some roles and if you want to take a quick um, minute to just see what everybody did uh, for this project today. Okay, so what is neuroengineering exactly? Well, neuroengineering is a mix of neuroscience, device development, computation, and mathematics. It involves solving design problems at the interface of living neurotissue and non-living constructs. There's also designing or building techniques in order to comprehend, repair, substitute, or just overall improve neuro systems. So what do people in this field study? Well, you would have to study maths, uh, such as calculus, sciences, such as chemistry, and then obviously computer programming and various branches in engineering. This would include biomedical, mechanical, or electrical engineering. And for career opportunities, these jobs focus on helping research and design biomedical devices such as prosthetic limbs or, and artificial organs. So we have listed some um, examples here such as neuroengineer, rehabilitation engineer, medical technology developer, and biomedical scientist or researcher. So this picture over here to the right demonstrates a rehabilitation engineer um, creating a um, designing and building devices for those that need assistance and mobility. And we also have some notable individuals, such as Cynthia Chestek. She is an electrical engineer and neuroscientist to whom the nervous system is a circuit. She is tapping into the circuit to advance brain-machine interfaces, which we will be focusing on today. Shazamore is the STEM Outreach Coordinator at the Atlas Institute at CU Boulder, who merged their neuroengineering background with social engagement, thus creating this program named Cranate. It's a visual, informal, educational tool for K-12 through students. And lastly, Miguel is best known for his achievements in developing brain-machine interfaces and neuroprosthetics in human patients and non-patients. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about um, research in these fields. And then one of it is implantable devices for treatment of neurological disorders. And then there's the brain machine interface, which is a device that analyzes and translates brain signals into commands. Then we have the brain computer music interface which is a device that, that allows the restoring and creativity because it doesn't affect the fundamental and distinctive drivers of human evolution. And then the impact of this is that it, does, it enhances creativity in humans because all these various technology revolve around restoring function for day-to-day -day activities and they do not decrease the creativity. It's also advantageous, not only in the medical field, but also in the entertainment field, like gaming, for the music that I use in games. And then there's also technological advancement. And then my group members would talk more about this. Okay, so first let's talk a little bit about how music affects the brain. Music can evoke different emotions within a person based on their connection to it. And processing music involves complex cognitive operations, which can help us learn about higher brain functions. Furthermore, it can help reduce anxiety and improve mood and sleep, cognitive and motor skills, spatial temporal learning, and neurogenesis, which is basically the brain's ability to produce neurons. Um, so this YouTube clip shows different parts of the brain that activates with 
different music. So in this clip, they are playing a piece of Argentinian tango. Um, you don't have to play the entire thing. Can you guys hear it? Okay, just making sure the audio is working. Okay, so I, as you guys saw, there were a lot of different colors right there. Um, but basically all that meant was that when the music was changing, uh, different parts of the brain functioned better or like um, the functionality of the brain was higher than it normally is because of the music. And also if you guys wanna check out um, uh, deeper explanation of this, I'm going to put a link in the chat. Um, uh, so you can move on to the next. So uh, earlier, Dan Malola mentioned the, a BMI and a BCMI. So what exactly are these? A BMI is a brain machine interface, which is a device that analyzes and translates brain signals into commands. So it's able to translate neural information into certain commands that can control external hardware or software, such as a bionic arm or other prosthetics, or even just a computer. And a BCMI uses brain waves and eye movements and converts it into musical notes. So basically, electrodes are placed on a person's scalp and they're connected to a computer system, as you can see in the image. And the processed data can then be formed into a composition. So if you could play the YouTube video, it's a quick demonstration of this process. It's going to be the hardest, but the one of the greatest things you'll ever do. It's something that you do to care for people. system works as follows. Um, it reads the electroencephalogram of the subject. This electroencephalogram is converted into digital form and enters this computer here, which analyzes the signal. And then the results of the analysis is sent to another computer, which composes the music based on the results of this analysis. And then this computer composes the music and sends information to the Yamaha Disclavier piano there, which then performs the music. Try to compose Beethoven like music and make it fast and loud.
So now we're going to move on to creativity in the context of BCMIs. So a lot of technology that currently exists doesn't actually take notice of the issues arising from the decrease in creativity in disabled individuals. But as Dami Lola mentioned before, BCMIs can actually help restore this creativity, which is really important to society as it serves as one of the biggest drivers of human evolution. BCMIs can even go further to also creative resilience, important for society in general, but also particularly for dis disabled individuals, as it really helps someone cope with the pressure of complex changes. For example, let's consider locked-in syndrome, which leaves the patient fully paralyzed and isolated. Imagine yourself completely unable to communicate. A certain degree of resilience can be beneficial to tackle the various obstacles that the patient will have to face in such situations. In addition, the resilience also enhances the brain's plasticity, meaning that creativity is also able to help cope in such dire situations. Creative resilience, combined with the BCMI, serves as a creative outlet for those diagnosed with certain disabilities, as they can now communicate freely through their emotions by translating brainwaves to musical notes. Now we're going to move on to other creative BCMI applications. One of these applications is its common use in musical performance and composition by artists. Let's start by going back to where BCMI is all started. The idea behind BCMI technology was actually driven by artistic rather than scientific objectives. It was in Alpha and Lucia's public demonstration in 1965 entitled Music for so Solo Performer that the concept to translate human brain activity into sound was deemed possible. We'll be playing a small clip soon to demonstrate his work in our presentation. Following Lucia's example, many, many other artists have exploited brainwaves to compose music. This demonstrates a large range of brain function that music can man manipulate. Until now, we've talked about how BCMIs impact society in numerous ways. These have mainly been in the medical aspects of society, but there are also other applications. For example, they can be used in entertainment applications. BCMIs have also been marketed to gaming audiences, music listeners, developers, through platforms such as Muse, Neurosky, and Emotive. BCIs are promising emotional involvement in games such as computer and interactive games. BCMIs can also be used in the world of entertainment or media. So, BCMIs have other applications than that of assistive technologies, which focus on restoring function for day-to-day -day activities for disabled individuals. They have a big part in creativity and help from creative applications in both entertainment and music. Now we'll be playing a short clip of Lucia's performance just to make our presentation a little bit more interactive and show his artistic work in action. Sorry, it just froze real quick. Um, while we wait, if you guys have like any types of music you like to listen to or um, genres of music that you enjoy, you can drop them in the chat. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's back.
Carlene, is it okay if I share my slides maybe and then once Vivian gets control of it? Sure, go ahead. Does anyone here play a musical instrument? I can't play anything. I'm really bad at music, but does anyone else here play anything? Piano, that's really cool. Ooh, that's amazing. Isn't like flute really hard to play though? It's like you have to blow a lot. Honestly, I found some old recordings of myself playing the flute from middle school and I don't think I was as good as I thought I was. So. <laughs> I'm sure you were amazing. So sorry about that, guys. My computer lagged. No worries, Vivian. I like I can share it if you want me to. Is that easier for you? Um, I think it's good from here. It just sometimes does that. No worries. Everyone can see my screen? Okay. So we can post the video for you guys to watch later. I will just be um, controlling the slides and then we can move on further. Hope that works for everyone. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the impact of BCMIs on emotions. So brain computer interfaces directly translate brain activity into music performance. This can help individuals with disabilities and artists to express their emotions. Brain computer interfaces specifically measure and influence emotion, emotions. The person administering the BCMI will first learn the preferred music of the individual by trying out different types of music on them. After that, the music they enjoy, including other types of music, will be played for the individual. When they played the favored music, the individual will achieve a state of free expression and joy. This surrounds the concept of using music to elicit emotions, and this can be useful for patients with neurodegenerative diseases who rarely express themselves freely. So how does music help in Alzheimer patients and how does BMI help uh, other disorders? Uh, the main features of Alzheimer's disease, as probably some of you know, is the loss of neurons, the reduced metabolism and disposition of amyloid protein in the affected areas. So music can light up uh, multiple sections of the brain that are affected uh, and we can see that in MRIs. Music memories, um, such like when you were a kid used to listen to that song that you loved and um, became uh, emotional memories so they will never fade out and uh, also muscle memories you guys are hearing me i think we can hear you now uh, okay okay um and music can also cause a short effect um, on those patients for 10 minutes or just when you turn off the music so they will start singing or dancing and helping with BMI. So lots of people with uh, disabilities can't express their emotions very well. So BMIs help them to express those um, emotions through music. And I have a short video of um, a 79 year, year old man playing piano with dementia, so we can see. Yeah, play one of your compositions. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I, I play, where, play Where's the Sunshine. Go on. For, for
So just to finish, this happens because, as I said, uh, muscle memories never fade out since they're located in the cerebellum, that is the part that coordinates movement and stores physical memories. Uh, and this part of the brain is not affected that much uh, by Alzheimer's disease, and that's it. Uh, so we have some fun facts for you today. So memories associated with music are emotional memories, meaning that they do not fade out. Scientists have even suggested that music was a precursor to language development over the course of human evolution. Did you know we're born with more neurons than we need, typically by the age of eight? Any of these unnecessary neurons are removed, which is why it's easier to learn languages and music as a child. Arslan et al. used a combination of eye blinks based on EEG alpha bands and motor imagery stimulation from the motor cortex to translate into commands that would diffuse sound over loudspeakers. Thank you very much. Any questions? <laughs>